Hey y'all, welcome to Alicat Customs. In today's video, we're gonna be setting up the pinion bearing preload using a crush sleeve eliminator, and I'll show y'all how I set it up to get the proper amount of uh, preload. So y'all stick around. So I'm at the final phase of building this rear axle. It is a uh, 8.6 GM 10 bolt that is going in a 2000 Chevrolet Silverado. And in the final assembly phase is when I'm gonna be setting the final pinion bearing preload. And I'm gonna be setting it up using a crush sleeve eliminator. Uh, so I'm gonna show y'all uh, how to um, get it set up and uh, how to set your shim stacks and how to find the proper uh, pinion bearing preload how to get that part set so you can get your axle finished up. So I'm about to dive in and show you all those steps now. All right, so first, before I dive in and show you all how to set it up, I'm gonna show you all what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, this is the pinion gear that's going in this axle. And you'll have, on this axle, you have set up with a crush sleeve. Typically, it's how they come from the factory. So the crush sleeve will slide over onto the pinion shaft. And then you have your outer uh, pinion bearing will slide into place on the uh, on the pinion and when it's installed into place you put the uh, pinion gear through the axle this way and then you slide that um, the outer pinion bearing on and these two bearings are sandwiched in the in the housing on the inner pinion on the outer races that are pressed into the housing so what the crush sleeve does or in this case where i'm doing a crush sleeve eliminator is i'm just getting rid of this uh crush sleeve and and replacing it with a solid spacer using shims to do the same basic job that the crush sleeve did. And what that does is allows you to put the proper amount of torque onto the, uh, the pinion yoke nut to lock this down so you won't have you know, any, any ability for the, the pinion to move around. It sets, sets a good solid uh, preload on your pinion bearings. Um, because you know the, the the pinion on on our rear axle it takes a lot of abuse under power and it's steadily trying to pull itself into the axle as and pull itself out so you got to have something that can lock in the preload settings on your gears or on the bearings which will then in, in keep your pattern running true so when you're setting up using a crush sleeve you really just uh, you put the crush sleeve into place, slide the uh, pinion shaft into the housing, and then you put the outer uh, pinion bearing on, and then you can put your yoke on, put the nut on, and then you tighten it down and you actually crush the crush sleeve. And as it crushes down to get to the right um, distance, you'll start to gain pinion bearing preload as you continually uh, uh, smash the outer pinion bearing against it. It'll start to crush and give you that preload against the bearings to, to uh, have the right rotating resistance on your bearings. Um, these things, are, it's, that's a you know, fairly easy way to do it, to tighten it down. Once you get it tight and get it set into place, you're done, you can move on to the next step. Um, I don't really like these, especially in a high horsepower application uh, because the, am the amount of abuse and stuff you can cause these to lose their preload. So I like, this, the, I like the idea of using a solid spacer and, a, and shims to really lock into that, that distance. So uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to actually get it, get it set up because you have to find your, uh, the correct distance in here to get your uh, preload set. And everything's gonna have a bit of a variation due to machine intolerances and stuff. Um, but one, one trick, if you, um, you can do to get yourself close, is if you have the original crush sleeve, you can use that measurement. That, are, that usually will get you pretty close on that. So you get the measurement of the original crush sleeve, you take your new solid spacer and the shims and add, add those together to get to the same, uh, same thickness uh, on that. Try that for your first, your first setup. And if it's close, then you know which way you need to go, whether you need to tighten it up. If to tighten it up, you have to run less shims and to loosen the preload up, you have to add shims. 
Um, I like to start off with it fairly loose and crawl my way into it because if you go, go too tight, you can risk damaging something if you don't catch it on the rotation before you just crash the uh, bearings into the races. So be careful when you're setting this up. I try to start off, start off loose if I can't nail it dead on, and then I slowly tighten the shim stack up until I get to where I want to be. So uh, without further ado, let's get to work. While I'm working to find the proper pinion bearing preload, I do not use a pinion seal on the axle. I don't want to risk damaging it while pulling the uh, yoke in and out. And I also use a setup bearing for the outer pinion bearing. That is a bearing that has a slip fit on the inner race so that it makes it easier to slide on and off of the pinion. It just makes everything easier when you're setting it up. It took me several tries to thin down the shim stack enough to get the proper pinion bearing preload. So I won't show y'all all the attempts it took to do it, but I will show you this setup in particular because I got the shim stack just a hair too thin, which uh, created too much preload. And as you can see, I'm torquing the pinion nut down. And, and as I'm doing it, I'm wiggling the pinion around and around to see if I can feel drag. And you'll see it right when I feel feel there's too much drag, and I reverse the uh, the little impact, and uh, back it off so I can pull the uh, yoke apart, so I can add to the shim stack because I know I'm really close, so I just not need to add uh, some more shim thickness to get it back right. I use a two jaw puller to pull the uh, pinion yoke off. I don't like try, trying to smack on things and stuff when I'm trying to pull the yokes off. Um, that's why I use a setup bearing. Um, I don't want to put any more um, pressure or, or any impacts into the bearing races. I don't want any chances for something to get damaged. So using a two, two jaw puller to pull the yoke off and then the pinion will slide out of the setup uh, outer pinion bearing. It just makes makes the job job easier and safer for me. Uh, it's just a trick that I found that really works uh, as, as I'm setting these up. After adjusting my shim stack, I put the pinion back together and I go to check the pinion bearing preload. And as I tighten it down, I can start to feel some drag. So I go ahead and put some more pressure on it to uh, bind down on it to make sure that I have everything seated. And then I continue to spin the uh, pinion around. I feel there's a good bit of drag, so I wanna check to see where it's at. So I set up to use my inch pound dial type torque wrench and I have found that is, as it looks right there, I'm right in the 15 inch pound range. As I spin it around both sides, you're looking for rotational torque, not breakaway torque. So you need to start to rotate the pinion around to make sure that it's the spinning resistance, not the initial breakaway to start the spin. Once I've, I see that I'm happy with the uh, 15 inch pounds, I torque the, uh, the pinion nut on, I go to 140 foot pounds, and then I recheck to confirm if it is the same uh, pinion uh, pinion bearing preload on it. And when I find out that it is, then I'm then I'm ready to continue building the axle. All right. So one of the most common questions I get about setting up. Uh, pinion bearing preload or really setting up anything is how many shims did you use and what was your shim thickness and that really isn't a question that I or anybody else can answer um, that would be accurate for your specific case. 
It all depends on uh, machining tolerances and what, what parts and pieces you're using as to what these measurements will be. That's why you have a variety of shims all kind of different thicknesses. Um, because what you're trying to do when you're setting pinion bearing preload is you're trying to get the correct amount of uh, preload pressure on your bearings so that they will ro rotate uh, properly. Uh, so uh, uh, the bearing preload, like with a, I have an outer race right here, and this is the bearing. So if you don't have any pressure, you can hear the, the bearing will rattle. Well, anything that's it's attached to, it's going to rattle. And that slack right there, if you have any slack like that, it's going to cause chattering, uh, which can just dest destroy the inner and outer races and the, and the bearings themselves. Um, and that also, whatever this is attached to, is going to move and wiggle. Imagine like your, your, your uh, trailer tire, you got bad wheel bearings and stuff, and you watch the tire kind of flop around and wobble on it. So th that's what you're doing is you're just using, um, in a crush sleeve, you would just crush the crush sleeve down until it applies the pressure against the bearing. And that, that uh, pressure you're applying will make sure that the rollers have enough pressure so that they roll without chattering, but not so much pressure that they'll try to slide. What's, if they skid from having too much pressure applied or they chatter from not having a, enough pressure, that's bad news. It'll ruin it either way. So all you're doing is, is you're just going from, let me grab that, the other bearing. You know, you've got both of the races in the, in the housing, pre, uh, pressed into place, tapped into place. And then when these two bearings are on here together, and this is your crush sleeve, where the crush sleeve goes, but this is the crush sleeve and eliminator. So I have the sleeve, and I have my shim. And this is my final assembly set up. So this is, this is how it's gonna look. So you have an outer race pressing against here, an outer race pressing against here. So as you tighten this down, you're getting closer and closer to pushing the rollers into both of your races. And as you're squeezing these down, that's what's applying the pressure. So the amount of shim you need, you need this to bottom out and the torque on this, on, on your uh, nut, the pinion nut, at this time that this is tightened and you can apply torque, the proper torque to your pinion nut, I go, I go to 130 foot pounds. Um, at that moment, you need to be able to have the proper amount of preload on the bearings. So on uh, new bearings, it's 14 to 16 inch pounds of rotation. As you rotate this around, that uh, allows you to have enough preload on these so you're not having them too loose or too tight. So I hope you can see that's a good uh, representation of how, how it looks inside and what the amount of races does. So that's pretty much how that works. And another thing I want to show you is uh, because it can, uh, it can cause you to have some issues with setup. See, this is setup bearing with the inside being honed out so it'll slide over. The final bearing will not slide like that. So make sure you're not using setup bearings to drive down the road. Um, when you're stacking your um, uh, the crushed sleeve of the motor, put the sleeve on first and then the shims because on the pinion head, it'll have a little bit of a uh, edge or a fillet in here and that edge will get caught by the shims and if, if the shims sit on this if you put it shim first and then the sleeve it will you could actually smash the, the sleeve and the sleeve instead of being flush and flat in there it'll 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 try to bow the sleeve up like that and uh that can cause you to have some some bad readings and it also smashes the shims beyond recognition to where you can't even use them to measure anymore. So make sure because the, the sleeve is big enough that when it goes on there, don't drop, it goes on there, it's got enough room on here that it, it doesn't hit the, the fillet or the edge of the, the machining spot. So it sits flat and then the shims will sit flat on top of this and they'll be captured by the uh, inner race of the outer pinion bearing. So uh, now that I got that done, I'm about to put the, um, uh, the good 
the final final assembly uh, bearing into the housing, uh, put the pinion seal in place, and then I'm gonna set this up for a final assembly and get ready to start building the rest of this rear end. For final assembly, I clean around the outer bearing race and where the pinion seal goes, and then I can install the uh, final assembly um, outer pinion bearing. This is the one that is not the slip fit setup bearing. So make sure you put the right bearing in and then I can install the outer pinion seal and then I can begin to put the pinion in, put the pinion, the yoke on and put the old pinion nut on just in case I have to take the axle back apart. I don't like to use the final pinion nut until the very end after the axle is built. Alrighty, so that is right at 15, right at 15 inch pounds of rotational force going both ways. So this is uh, the final assembly of this. Um, I used, uh, right now because I'm building the whole rear end, I used the old pinion nut and I did not put Loctite on it uh, because I don't want to deal with that, getting everything to come back apart. Um, just in case, I have to take this back apart to reset anything. Um, but once I have a uh, confirmation that I have a good pattern, once I get the backlash set and run my final pattern, I'll flip the axle back over, pull the, pull the old nut off, lock tight it, put the new uh, pinion, uh, pinion nut on there, and I'll torque it down to 130 foot pounds and everything will be good to go. But as of right now, seal is installed. It's 15 inch pounds of rotational torque. So uh, everything's done on this. I hope y'all found this video helpful, uh, showing y'all how, how to set this up. And I hope it makes it easy, easier for y'all to set y'all's rear ends up. Uh, so I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope you stick around to see the rest of this build right here at Alicat Customs.